Hey everyone, we're back here at our Dufferin project for another update on our eight unit build in downtown Toronto. It's been a couple months since we've been here, so there's lots that's happened. I can't wait to show you around and also talk about what's coming up next. Stick around. So the last time we were here, all of the trade contractors had started all of their rough-ins, the plumbing, the electrical, and the HVAC. Those are now complete on the top three floors. So let's start with plumbing. So I'm in one of our typical bathrooms in these units. You've got a one-piece tub-shower combination. That's all ready to go. You've got your toilet, and then you've got your sink and your vanity. All of the lines are in and ready to be tested. You'll see a similar setup here in the kitchens. And one of the things that I always recommend you do is have your kitchen drawings up here on the wall for all your trade contractors. That way they can look and make sure that they've got all of their things in the right spots based on your final design. All of our electrical has all been roughed in as well. And you can see behind me here that each one of our suites has its own dedicated electrical panel. What that allows us to do is to take all of the electricity from this unit, submeter it, and then the tenant has to pay for their own costs for electricity. In this building, all of our heating is done by electricity. So that allows us to not only separately meter the electrical, but also the heating and cooling for each tenant. Now, one of the challenges with a building like this is that we have to upgrade our electrical service. In most standard homes, you'd have a 100 amp or a 200 amp service. In a property like this, we need to go to 400 amp service because of all the electrical load in the eight units. We've been waiting for this service to be upgraded for the last six months and we're scheduled to have that completed in the next two months but until we get that 400 amp service coming into the building we can't connect all the electrical until that's all complete. All of our HVAC is also roughed in as well and you'll see beside me this is an electric air handler. It's a split system so you've got an exterior unit and you've also got an interior unit. These are incredibly efficient, these units, and there's one in each suite. So that allows the tenants to control their own heating and cooling inside of their unit. Now there's two different kinds of systems when it comes to heat pumps. You can either do ducted or ductless. In our case, we did ducted units. I find that this is a much more comfortable heating system because there's lots of registers and vents in each bedroom and in each common area versus the ductless units, which just have a head in each major room. The other thing that's been completed here is the spray foam on the top floor, which means that it's a little bit warmer in here, but it's still pretty cold inside the building because it's early January and it's cold outside. But the spray foam is complete on the upper level. Once we're done all of our rough-in inspections, then we'll insulate the entire building and start to work on the drywall. As you can see, all of the membranes on our exterior decks are complete, so that means that they're watertight from above now as well. We've also started our exterior railings. You can see that the glass isn't in yet, but the posts are in, the rails are in, and these are sturdy enough that it's safe out here to work. Now the part of the project that's lagging behind the most is the basement, and that's because we're waiting for the city services to come in before we can finish this area. We're waiting on the water and sewer lines to be brought into the building so that we can put the stone down, put the concrete slab in, and then we can start finishing the basement. By far the biggest transformation on the property is the exterior is almost complete. As you can see, the exterior doors are done. This is the front door, so it's a little bit more decorative. The other two doors are steel for their fire rating, but essentially the exterior of the building is starting to come together and it's almost complete. On the exterior of the building, we went with a stucco finish. Now this is a stucco stencil that's made to look like a brick. And then we've got a standard stucco finish here. This was part of the original design of the building and we didn't have a lot of choice in terms of what we could do for the exterior. We were required to do a brick pattern on one section and a stucco pattern on the other. So this is what we chose. Behind me are our two shed pads that have been completed now. One shed will be dedicated for garbage and the other shed will be dedicated for bicycle storage. These are now complete, the pads, and we can start doing the exterior sidewalk as well. And then we can eventually build those sheds and complete the back section of the property. So as you can see, we're really moving along in the project and we can't wait to finish. We've probably got another two to three months before the project is finished and we can occupy the building. I'll be back for another update when we move things along inside. For now, I'm heading to Costa Rica for the winter because it's way too cold here. If you're interested in learning more about this project or any of my other projects, check out my website at darrenvoros.com. You can also check out my course, which I teach on how to take on development projects of your own. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.